Chins up, comrades. Welcome to my diary. I'm Tatami, and today we're going to talk about how you shouldn't be wasting any tears on AOC. You shouldn't be just so glum, like, oh, there's nobody we can trust. Honey, there are so many people you could still trust. There's a whole ass Green Party out here. There's whole ass activists out here. The struggle is not over just because AOC has decided to fund the goddamn police, just because AOC is actually a capitalist, just because AOC is not a radical leftist as the right has been labeling her. And in fact, who is the radical group that knows her? Who is the radical group that claims her? Nobody, because she's very centrist. She's very mild. And she's going to continue to have excuses for you for why she doesn't do what she's supposed to do, why she was voted into uh, the house to to be in the first place. She's never going to raise hell like she was supposed to do. And she's always going to have a kind of condescending way of shame, shame, shaming you for thinking that she should be doing something else. I do want to take a second, though, to shout out some folks who did have a backbone. First of all, Cori Bush, well done. I'm just I'm just impressed with the fact that she is out here just speaking truths. She is the type of person who she's she was gone there and so far has seemed besides the, at the beginning was a little shaky. It did seem like is she just going to go along with what everybody does? But for right now, it does seem like she's just like the squad is bunk. It doesn't work together. And she's like, I'm going to just do what I'm supposed to do as a progressive. And that I commend that. And I commend that fully. Okay. I also want to shout out Ilhan Omar and Ayanna Presley. I guess it was just you three. I, I don't, I, I knew it was three of y'all. I knew Cori Bush was one. Jamal Bowman, what's good? AOC, what's good? Funding the police, even though the police being funded was not at all the issue of January 6th. This is just so mind-boggling to me, though, that we've really let the right take and make this whole narrative about who should be what. And so that's my first suggestion. The reality is a huge part of this issue is that rhetoric. It's that rhetoric from the right that so slammed her and so painted her a certain way that leftists for some reason felt the need to defend her even though she wasn't really that leftist and had never really um you know she had never really promised anything to anybody she had never really beyond done anything that was radical that wasn't just a basic like climate change is a big deal guys and we should have health care because a lot of other countries do too and they spend less than we do and have comparable results so it just doesn't make sense that's just not a crazy ass take but for some reason we've let her be the face and that's why i say she takes up so much space and we need to stop giving her the time of day stop giving her that space that platform and stop letting the right dictate who is given a platform in our party and who isn't we need to decide that we need to be lifting up these people we need to be deciding who our fighter is and choosing an actual fighter choosing somebody who's willing to make enemies who there is no mama bear for them there and fuck all the people who you know all the republicans because they say fuck you to to our lives every day that's the type of person we need but for some reason we're letting our people be crowned by other people and i feel like it's vitally important for us to realize and then the other part of that is that we, I think this is another boom, uh, obvious moment that this this idea by all these center leftists that seem to run the conversation on the uh, on YouTube. You know, we have like Kyle Kalinske, Pacman, Sam Cedar, Fair and Balanced, right? We have the Waldorf Nation, the, and so I'm just saying. I'm not saying all of them have been super into the Democrat Party, but all, all of them kind of give them a little more slack than I think that they should. And because of this, it paints this picture where people aren't holding the Democrat Party to a to any kind of um, high standard, you know what I'm saying? Before, when everybody, when they were saying like, oh, let's vote for Biden and then we'll push him left. Well, now we're here and you know, we have people like Pac-Man who are <sighs> gung-ho for anything Jen Psaki says. He's like, yes, Jen Psaki. Yes. Jen Psaki, you know, backhanded this reporter for asking a dumbass question, Jen Psaki. 
that's how he acts about Jen Psaki. It's too much. And it just shows, though, that, like, they were never really... You're, they're not they're just not leftists and we need to start drawing lines in the sand for who's what because we can be allies for the same policies and not be considering ourselves the same thing now back to aoc i also want us to learn when we are being used to be able to recognize that because i feel like a lot of us don't see how she's been utilizing the left utilizing the rhetoric of the left utilizing all the people of the left but then she's absolutely doing corporatist things if you give money to a corporatist then that's corporate that's corporate period if you're out here voting for things and not holding your ground and making a stink and coming together with the squad like she's an og member of the justice democrats why is she not out here like guys we need to be all on the same page blah 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 and further, I know that she's not, um, not only because Corey, you know, was saying it's every man for himself in the squad, but also because I'm like, at the end of the day, the three who decided to not vote for the bill were kind of last minute and it felt like side-eyed by the other, de by the corporate Dems. They were like, oh, we thought everybody was down. Like, that shouldn't even be on anyone's radar. They should just be willing to do things like that, that all of the squad members should be coming out like, oop, boop. Now there's no bill. Take that out. Now there's no bill. If the squad had all come together, there would have been no bill. But because the squad is so broken up, there is nothing. And they sh they're they not all going like, oh, oops, to oops to the corporate Dems. Oh, looks like we just fucked up your bill. Yeah, you feel betrayed. That's how we feel all the time. How isn't that funny? Now give us something and we'll see what we can do. Okay, we'll see what we can fight for. Okay, we'll see how we can help this this go. But there is no relationship like that. And AOC is definitely not the one to do. So that's why I say chin up. Don't be out here just like, oh, we've been let down. And she was never anything. She was never going to be anything. She is just a popular face. And I think that's where we need to really focus is on our habits when it comes to who we're uplifting and who we're letting write the narrative for us. Because AOC should not have everybody so down like this. It should not have everybody so shocked by her behavior she has always been like this she is not a leftist socialist programs in a capitalist society are not socialism at their very base you know of what they are the very core of what they are they're just not socialism at the end of the day the, she's fighting for certain things that are towards progress but she should be somebody who we consider pretty far on the spectrum from us she should be somebody who we hold at arm's length and we're like, okay, so we can work with her, but we have to keep in mind she's okay with a lot of this corporatist bullshit. And she will say something to your face and she'll wag her finger to your face to make you feel bad for pointing it out to her. In fact, pivot and choose somebody else and recognize that this person may not be in the Democrat Party. I think we just really need to focus on getting local Greens into, uh, into position in government but then also eventually do some kind of, you know, I don't know, justice workers type of coalition. So and have them actually be working together because I'm just very confused. Like if Kyle Kalinske and Chank were some of the people who were helping create the justice Dems, why aren't they having any control over this or any say into this or like, hey, like, why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing that? Like, what is that? How did this organization come to be if there is no organization, if it's just literally every man for himself? And I'm grateful for Cori Bush for when she came in calling a spade a spade. No, this isn't, there's no organization here. Everybody's just doing whatever and then going on Twitter and going on TikTok and just running their lips. That's all this is. AOC is not our girl. And I don't know who they are, you know, man, woman, somewhere between or beyond. I'm, I know that they're out there and that we are going to be able to support them. But if we're going to continue to be distracted by other people's narratives and other people's headlines and let them define what our words mean, fucking, you know, AOC is somehow a leftist. I'm somehow a leftist. Bernie's a leftist. And they're in the Democratic Party. I'm in a totally different party. It just doesn't make any sense. And we don't have to be just continue to go with this narrative where it, it, even CNN and MSNBC and other centrist news really falls for that narrative where they really let the far right define what is like what each thing is defined by and, and they let them control the conversation. I just don't think we need to be playing that game. And I think 
like we don't need to be letting her f make us feel like oh it's all over it's not all over like AOC doesn't have that power sorry you guys like <laughs> at any rate may your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads and I will see you next time